What's going on there guys? Good evening. The Earthmaster here uh, with an update video on this end of the weekend, uh, November 28th, 2021, about 6.03 p.m. California time and uh, out here with uh, Missy Mimis. How's it going guys? Kind of looking at uh, the earthquake activity following that uh, pretty large 7.5 earthquake in Peru this morning, South America area. That's the, uh, of course, you can't miss it. It's the massive ring. <laughs> And the, uh, uh, I tell you what, that thing did some uh, crazy signatures on the Yellowstone um, seismographs here. But either way, we've been watching a uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity kick up in the South America region prior to the uh, to that large 7.5 that struck early this morning. Uh, I want to show you guys real quick the seven days uh, all magnitudes. You take out this 7.5 earthquake here in the Peru region. We pretty much wa watched a uh, unzipping, if you will, of deep uh, fours and fives up and down the Peru-Chile Trench uh, with the last one. What was it? A 5.1. Actually, there was a 4 point, oh, way up north there was, but there was a 5.1. Uh, kind of, I, I would pretty much assume this, pos well, I can't call it a force shock because it's a considerable distance away from that, but it just goes along with the... Uh, earthquake activity that's been taking place here over the last couple days uh, some deep movement and uh, pretty well clustered uh, into that Peru Chile trench area the 7.5 struck in a region where we have seen uh, uh, past historical earthquake activity and pretty deep movement as well Let's see if I can get the USGS to work here looks like uh, looks like it's working here uh, looks like um, over the last uh, century or so um, looks like there's been a few earthquakes within this vicinity uh, within that same magnitude and the same depth depth as this 7.5 that struck uh, looks like there was a couple at least including an 8.0 that occurred uh, back in 2019 so uh, subduction zone quakes very capable of producing uh, some large earthquakes and uh, in a, in a short amount of time, accumulated stress builds up uh, pretty rapidly uh, in this area. South America is uh, one of the most uh, built up regions of accumulated stress along uh, pretty much any subduction zone. Uh, also, uh, the north northwest corner of the park or the uh, of the plate, also a pretty good um, area for accumulated stress. But anyway, there's definitely been... Uh, uh, no aftershock activity following this 7.5, which I find that kind of odd. You can see there this this occurring early this morning, about 1 o'clock my time, 1.30, 1.52, somewhere around there. Uh, probably like right after I went to bed. I didn't see this earthquake until a couple hours later. Uh, but no aftershock activity at all that I could see, including on the EMSC model. I don't see any type of... Uh, anything any type of earthquake activity following that 7.5 in this region yes there was a 4.1 further up north but uh, no aftershock sequences going on uh, with that earthquake activity that struck in the Peru region this morning I find it just a little odd considering that's a pretty large earthquake uh, I did take uh, place down there at about 112 kilometers into the uh, Peru Chile trench and as I mentioned uh, no further activity down south here along the Peru Chile Tr Trench. Activity up north here into the northern part, uh, or at least the North American plate. Things kind of just leveling out at the moment. There's no uh, no major movement that I can tell up and down the coast. Things kind of just uh, typical earthquake day in California. I don't see any swarming activity either. A little bit of swarming. Well, this can't even really call three earthquakes a swarm. But some movement around the uh, Borrego Springs, it looks like, uh, off the uh, fault system here of the San Jacinto Fault area. A couple of earthquakes within that region. But far as the San Andreas Fault goes and the Imperial Fault, all pretty quiet. Things looking pretty uh, mellow for the most part. In Texas, we did have some activity around the Pecos, Texas area, including a 3.6. That one occurring uh, after the 7.5 that struck this morning. New Madrid area. Just a little earthquake activity uh, around the Tiptonville, Tennessee region, New Madrid zone. 1.9 earthquake striking that area. We have seen a little bit of movement and uptick 
in the Puerto Rico area following that 7.5 this morning, mostly to the southwest of the Puerto Rico area and areas west around the, uh, what is it, Mona Passage region. A couple of threes and twos kicking off in this area of the world. The Puerto Rico Trench, though, remains relatively quiet. Uh, no earthquake activity to report there um, over the last 24 hours. Things still remain pretty quiet along the Aleutian Trench. Alaska seen some earthquake activity up there, but nothing really to uh, write home about. We did see some further activity in the Japan region. I believe this was after the 7.5, right? Yes. Uh, some fours kicking up into the Japan Trench. Some of that activity deep as well. 4.6 um, within the Kuril. Uh, looks like right around the uh, Kuril Kupchuk uh, Trench region, Japan Trench. See if I can spit that out. <laughs> 67 kilometers for that 4.6 that struck um, earlier today, but after the 7.5. Uh, and then it looks like the latest uh, 4.6 further down south here. Um, pretty shallow earthquake activity, but nonetheless, we did see a little bit of uptick in earthquake activity in this region uh, with some uh, plate adjustment there following that 7.5. Uh, Solomon Islands, some activity kicking up here, nothing significant. All looks pretty uh, below the 5.0 threshold, but we did see some deeper movement kick off here. Uh, 4.9 around the Indonesia area. And a couple other deep earthquakes here around the Fiji Islands area with a 568 kilometer deep 4.1, which struck, uh, I believe that was late last night, looks like, uh, early this morning there with that uh, UTC time. Movement over here to the west, a lot of this activity, uh, just some minor quakes, 4.5, 4.6 around the uh, India region, it looks like. Areas west over here, pretty clear. Baghdad, uh, what do we got? Iran region, 4.2, kicked up a little bit. Mediterranean Sea, uh, had a little 4.4 in Italy. That was late last night, it looks like, with that UTC time. 10 kilometers uh, for that earthquake. So just kind of waiting to see what happens here, folks. I mean, it's, uh, I kind of figured something was brewing last night with all that up and down earthquake activity, uh, just kind of zipping up and down the Peru Chile Trench. And we were looking at some of that uh, information on subduction zones earlier. Is what we were going to kind of check out, if I remember correctly. I don't know if I still have those pulled up. So we'll have to get back we'll to that to and pull them up. We'll definitely get back to that one of these days for sure. Uh, it was, was it the accumulation stress on these? I or? believe so. Yeah. It was just a map that kind of much, pretty much shows uh, accumulated stress in subduction zones, uh, but I'm not for sure. I don't have it. Well, oh, maybe right that's there. it. Is this right it? There. Yep. Yeah, this here is just a little, just a little map here uh, showing certain subduction zones around the plates. Of course, red. Uh, this isn't really the best map here. It's kind of a smaller map here. Um, not something I would want to show on the channel. It's just I, I'm having trouble seeing this myself. But red indicated of the higher stress areas. Of course, the uh, subduction zone of the Peru Chile Trench in the red. The Middle American Plate here, American Trench, uh, Middle American Trench here, uh, pretty high accumulated stress as well. And of course, into the Pacific Northwest, um, some heightened uh, accumulated stress as well. This is just on a yearly, um, any given year, as far as the stress buildup goes here. Looks like over here around the Philippine plates, very minimal. But up north here in the Lucian Trench, all getting into the uh, heightened uh, subducting. What is that? Subduction. Seg I, I can't even see that. It's so tiny. Uh, I can't even read that either. <laughs> so, so tiny. But yeah, uh, nonetheless, though, uh, Peru Chile Trench is among the largest. It, it is the largest, I believe. It's a big one. That's where we see all the deep earthquakes and all the large ones and the largest earthquake mm -hmm. <clears throat> ever recorded, supposedly, uh, in the South America region. So no doubt uh, this area, definitely uh, no stranger to some large earthquakes. I want to show you guys what it did to the uh, Yellowstone thumbnails here. Pretty uh, significant signature on the Yellowstone graphs here. Showed up all over the place, but whenever we see these large earthquakes, I kind of like to look at the other 
seismographs here that don't show it. You know, what, what's the reason for having these so toned down, if you will, to where it doesn't even pick up a large earthquake at, that all these uh, other graphs are picking up? Such as Joseph's Coat uh, down here at Mount Sheridan, uh, nothing. Not even a speck. You could probably have an asteroid hit the Earth and it won't even make a small signature on that graph. Not for sure why they keep these things tuned like that, but it is what it is. Down here in Hawk's Rest as well, nothing uh, to even see. But the majority of the stations here properly tuned, Old Faithful's toned down. Not for sure why, maybe it's possible they don't want to pick up all the, the geyser activity when it kicks off. It looks like maybe right there's that 7.5 and that some S waves kicking up, uh, creating those really wavy lines. But even then, this station here is pretty well toned down. Uh, when it comes to picking up seismic waves. As uh, far as earthquake activity goes at Yellowstone, pretty quiet. No swarming to report. There was a little earthquake uh, following that 7.5. see here, but that's been uh, within the last hour or two. This is going to be this earthquake right here. Then again, USGS has not issued anything in the way of uh, the swarming that we've seen over the past couple days here at Yellowstone National Park. I'm expecting... Uh, Let's see if they put it up here in the seven days. No, this is definitely uh, definitely not it. This is from the 23rd to 24th. We we're looking at the time frame, uh, I believe, on the 26th uh, and yesterday, where there was probably at least 80 to 100 earthquakes or so, and they have not included any of that on their uh, on their updates. So maybe maybe tomorrow they're going to be waking up, shaking off that turkey hangover and uh, getting back on on the job you know hopefully we'll see uh what else we got trimmer maps remaining are very quiet tonight six epicenters of trimmer along the southern end of the cascadia just a just a super small amount folks and uh, looking at the time frame here of this earthquake activity or the uh, trimmer activity kind of curious to see if that took place before or after that 7.5 7.5 was uh, uh, 10.52 UTC time. And Trimmer, this activity struck uh, before GMT. I don't know if that's GMT. I think this struck before the 7.5 struck. It's hard to say, but either way, we're still in a quiet spell of uh, Trimmer activity in the Cascadia. Not a whole lot going on at the volcanoes either in the Pacific Northwest. Some small earthquake activity around the Mount Hood area, but uh, overall that's uh, some earthquake activity that came in late uh, on the USGS map. This is from yesterday. But uh, three, three microquakes around the government camp region. Mount Hood sits right here, just right at the base, about five kilometers for that uh, earthquake activity. But uh, other than that, folks, not a whole lot going on. Just kind of waiting to see uh, see if we're going to get any aftershocks here with that 7.5. Sometimes these larger earthquakes can really kick up stuff around the globe uh, and make some adjustments on any given plate. Uh, and then sometimes they can put uh, they can put a pause on earthquake activity for a number of days uh, while things just kind of just float along. And that's kind of what we're looking at the, the moment. We haven't seen any major areas of watch following that 7.5 um, late last night, early this morning. So Hawaii, a little bit of activity out there in the middle of the Pacific, but even there, things are just kind of diminished. Uh, only two microquakes here within the last hour and only 28 earthquakes within the southeast flank region. Kilauea and Mauna Loa all looking pretty quiet. Uh, what else we got here for the sun? Not a whole lot going on on the sun either. Looks like a 40% chance of a sea flare. Sunspot activity diminishing. It has been. It's been very low over the past week or so. With some sunspots exiting the earth side and around the bend. Not a whole lot of promising details at all when it comes to sunspot activity. So just kind of keep an eye on things, folks, and we'll see how it plays out. What else we got here, Missy? Is that about it? I think that's it for now. For now. Have a good night, folks. We will chat at you guys a little bit later on. And, um, yeah, just stay safe out there. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Have a good night, guys.